Hey, it's Kit. Are you tired of me yet? <laughs> okay, this is our next project. And I call this the Venue Album because it is going to be six, almost six by six pages that you can work up your little venues. I don't know how many of you do that. I have a feeling a lot of you are sketchers. And if that's the case, then you still could use a uh, format like this and put uh, paper in it instead of the actual three-dimensional venues. I'm not a sketcher. Well, I do doodle. But when it comes to working <clears throat> excuse me, with layers, I like three-dimensional. I like touch feel. So what this is, is first off, one of the easiest things you're ever going to do. And uh, the next thing is, if you are a beginner, I want you to think about using something like this. Because what I have found is I do a lot of cards, uh, do a lot of albums, and sometimes I'll get an idea for an album page. And I don't really know where I want to take the album. So you could actually create, create album pages uh, all by themselves and uh, keep them together in your little venue book. And as that process grows, as that thought process develops, then you could actually take things out of here. And uh, I put everything in these usually with temporary tape so that I can remove them and use them somewhere else. But this is just a sample here. I came up with an idea for a frame where I just cut layers of, um, I forget what this die, scallop square. Let's call it this scallop square. It's a die cut. I cut, um, I think four, cut four uh, of those on my Big Shot with my die. And then I dampened the edges and just wadded them all up and uh, bended, bend, bent them up. Again, I'm still having trouble with my dental. I apologize for that. But um, then I uh, glued them together and took a piece of chipboard, put a picture on it. And this one says it all started like this. This picture reminds me of my baby pictures, but not in those clothes because I'm not that old. But uh, the face reminds me of uh, my baby pictures. So I just made a little venue here. That's what I call these, our venues. Also, I have a friend across the pond. Hello, Mary. Hope you're doing well today. Bless your heart that uh, every once in a while we'll send each other a little envelope or big envelope in some cases with lots of scraps in it and just die cuts and things that we've done um, that we had left over from other projects or just we want to test out a die. We usually don't tell each other what we're sending so it's always a nice surprise when it comes and then what I love to do you'll hear me use the phrase OPS other people's stuff it's so fun to get bits and pieces of other people's stuff and then just create with them just make something so this is a perfect place to keep them all together I used to just throw them all in a basket and then I'd have to dig through them when people would come in and say, what have you been doing? Then I'd have to dig through them and it just, this is much more professional and much more impressive, I think, way of showing them what you've been doing. So I even have a couple AT cards in here that I'm working on that I haven't finished that uh, I decided to put them in here so that uh, I'd know where they were and I could get back to playing with them when I had more scraps on hand that I thought would go with that. So anyway going to be the easiest thing you've ever done and I've actually already got the one cut because this is like the fourth time I've made this video. I was having camera problems again. I don't know what it is. It comes, it goes, it comes, it goes. So anyway, I'm uh, going to fake cutting another sheet out. <laughs> but you're just going to take your 12 by 12 sheet and this project 
you only need your piece of paper, your scoreboard, and a pair of scissors. And then ink, if you want to ink the edges of it. But you're going to put your 12 by 12. Oh, and I love this paper. This is by Echo Park. It's part of their Bella Road collection. And I got this sometime last year, so I don't know if it's still even available. But it has on the paper itself... Uh, four six by six sections. So I thought, well, that'll be cute. I usually try to keep the background plain so it doesn't take away from the venue. But I thought, well, I'm going to do something different here and actually create little venues that works with the background just to see how that works. So first thing you're going to do, put your 12 by 12 sheet on your scoreboard and you are going to score at... Let's see, I want this. I think I scored this wrong to begin with, too. Now well, let's keep it inside. Okay, I want this to be the inside, so it's going to fold up this way, so I'm actually going to score on the back side. I love the back, too. It's limey green, which is one of my favorite green colors. So, you're going to score at 5.75 all the way down your paper. You're going to score at... Six and a quarter, 6.25, all the way down your paper. Then you're going to rotate it a half turn. And you're going to score at 5.875, all the way down your paper. And you're going to score at 6 and an eight, 6.125, all the way down your paper. And you're done. Set the scoreboard aside. I'm going to keep the tool out so that I can burnish, but next thing we're going to do is decide which sides you want to fold up as your flaps. And that side is where you're going to make three simple cut lines. <coughs> Excuse me. First you're going to cut, this is that one half inch score. This is the quarter inch score. So we are cutting on the one half inch scored area on the bottom, what you conceive as the bottom or per perceive as the bottom. You're going to cut all the way up to the second score line up here on the outside of your score line. Cut all the way up this one to the second score line. Then we're going to fold up on the furthest score line, fold up on the other furthest score line, and then you will take your scissors and you will cut out that um, long, thin rectangle that you just cut. And you're done. You can put your scissors away. Uh, we'll take the score tool and burnish our fold lines opposite the direction of the fold and what we're doing is we're creating little space little a little air pocket in here so that you can uh, have plenty of room to decorate and this one is going to be bigger because the other two are going to tuck up inside of it so hope this is in camera I'm almost too tired to talk after doing this so many times <laughs> but there you go you've got your little venue album and um, the only other thing that I would do with mine is I inked the edges and I'll probably ink the edges on that one too so is that not the easiest thing you've ever done and again it's a good place to practice colors to practice this um, layering. I love this little one. This all came from Mary too. It's the cage with the, uh, I put the queen inside with a crown outside here and this is the queen bee trying to help her escape because the queen bee has the key. So you can just make up little stories within the venue itself. Uh, you can theme all the venues and then eventually transfer them to another book or you could actually make a mini album out of this, and uh, I think it would be quite impressive because it gives you plenty of room. You don't have to worry about closures. You could stuff this thing full 
and it would lay flat and it's just again kind of a, a layout design that you haven't seen before um, well I shouldn't say that a layout design you I don't see often and a nice surprise and a way to help display works of art I haven't decorated the back I love this one braggart impress B is for bird butterfly and braggart <laughs> Again, I think everything on there came from Mary out of her little goodie box. So thank you, Mary. I appreciate all the contributions and uh, I'm having fun with them, as you can tell. And if you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask. I hope most of this is getting in camera. I threw away my white sheet because it was starting to bug me. And I don't really like working on this gray, but... The white sheet helped me keep it in camera focus, and now I've got all this room. I'm not sure what is in camera focus, so I apologize for that. The only other thing, since um, that went so quickly, I wanted to show you. I have been sewing. Totally off base, has nothing to do with paper, but I have been doing some sewing, and I'm going to start filling up my uh, little sewing book with pictures that I made on one of my previous videos using the Jenny Belly spine design. But I wanted to make a doll, and I wanted her just to be in all old vintage fabrics, and I don't know how I came up with this, to be honest with you. Those of you that know me know my dolls just kind of make themselves. I sit down at the sewing machine and just start stitching, and they kind of tell me what they want done to them. And... Um, being that I wanted to use all this vintage lace and ribbons and buttons and, you know, the logical thing would have been to do an angel, but I don't do the logical thing or the, the idea that is um, most common. So I decided to do just a little mama doll. Well, she told me that she wanted to be a mama doll with a little baby and it's very primitive and very out of shape for normal dolls but again that's what I like to do even the baby now the, does have arms and legs no face though I didn't put a face on the baby the baby didn't want a face I just used some old vintage velvet ribbon and uh, sewed some buttons on so button up here just to imitate a little curl on the top of the head and very primitive face I don't know if you can see this or not did a lot of hand stitching on that and then she wanted button hair so I've been really wanting to do this because I have a lot of old ivory um, glass and plastic and bake like buttons so I made hair and she told me she wanted some ribbons on the back of her gown and some buttons on her bum so that's what she got, and I don't even know if I'm done with her yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with her yet. I probably need to find somebody that's having a a vintage doll swap or something. If anybody knows of that, post it in the comments, please, because I might put her in a swap of some type. But there you go. been sewing her, and I don't even have a name for her yet or her story. And then the other thing, I wanted to do a hand and this is weird, I know, but that's what I like to do. So uh, this is a pin cushion that is an old hand. Um, I'm trying to think of the gal. Years ago, I saw these uh, pin cushions made this way in an art show. And I forget the designer's name. Oh, I'll think of it later. Um... So I've always wanted to do a hand, and my original thought was to do one with an arm that I could just store my bracelets on, just another way to store some bracelets. But um, I reverted back to the pin cushion because I remembered that from the show. So I decided, now I'll stay with the pin cushion I did. Hand me a pin, please. I put a tag on it. Again, I'm not sure if this is showing up. I may have to redo this video after I look at it. So, been sewing that, and I made a case to carry my uh, iPad. Actually, my iPad's in a case, but I made a tote bag. 
um, I don't know, here it is. It is just uh, a real simple backpack design. My iPad's in it. I had some pieces of wool that I wanted to use. They're hard to come by down here in Florida. So I get them at the thrift store. I buy wool uh, clothing and cut it up. And I love lilies. So this is the case that I made for my iPad. Just a backpack design where I can wear it as a backpack, sling it over my shoulder. As it pulls on itself, it tightens this up at the top, so I kind of like that. And I just made that up. I don't have a pattern for that. I'm sorry. But any of you that sew, and I've noticed a lot of you that paper craft also fabric craft too. Because we do like working in the different medias, so medium. So... Anyway, there you go, and I hope that you're having a great day, and I've got a couple more projects I'm going to try to get on a video if my camera cooperates. Again, I hope you're still there, and I'm still here. <laughs> my light's still on, so um, I need to get some lotion on my hands, too. They're starting to dry out. I washed them really well because I was getting ink on them, and now they feel very dry. So I'm going to go put some lotion on my hands, and then hopefully we'll be back with another video. So hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching, and take care, and uh, go make some simple venue albums. Bye-bye now.